What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here and today we're talking about composition and how you can tweak a few things to start getting better photos right away, like we're talking today. <laughs> Composition is one of my favorite things to talk about because it's so important in photography. Be that you're just starting out, maybe you're a seasoned amateur, maybe you pick up a camera every now and then, maybe you are like the, the highest of professionals. Regardless, across the board, composition is so important. The leading lines that'll lead you to the subject or the payoff of the photo, or using light in a certain way that it frames a subject. Framing your subject just in general, using architecture and the world around you to make that photo pop and stand out more. Photos that have good composition are just easier to look at. They're more balanced. There's something about them that when you look at that photo, you're like, ah, that's a great photo. And it's probably because the composition is either super unique, super creative, clever, or just really well balanced and thought out. And all those things come together in the end to give you an incredible photograph. So point number one is framing. Now, framing is so important and it can make your photos look ugh, from here to here. It's such a big difference. So if you're in the city, wherever you are, it doesn't even matter. Just look for structures. Maybe it's plants, maybe it's bushes, but look for something to frame your photo in. Instead of just like an open portrait of someone standing there taking a photo, maybe try to shoot it through some leaves. And I've talked about this before when we've, we've gone over shooting through things but finding natural frames, natural leading lines to place your subject in makes all the difference. So here's an example from yesterday. We were at the skate park, it was underneath the highway and there was lots of pillars that kind of support the highway, obviously, vanishing into the distance. So we move Maddie right into the middle of those, which is creating a natural frame. We place him in the center. Now going beyond that, what I mean by using the environment around you, here we are shooting in a stairwell. I use the rungs of the stairs to frame the shot. So instead of just shooting it dead on, those rungs now provide that frame, which gives me that unique composition, which makes the photo so much more interesting. So take a look at this photo. This is a really interesting shot because we're using those leading lines of the wall that go all the way to where that little entrance is, that door frame, if you will. It doesn't really go anywhere, but that's what I have Maddie stand under because it frames him out perfectly. So it's a nice balance to the photo because we've got that leading line up to the payoff, which is the door frame, which is where we're gonna place our subject. Now, what I mean by if you don't have architecture to frame your photo, you can use people. Here's Maddie again taking a photo. This is when we were in Italy. I used the people of the restaurant that we were sitting at to frame Maddie in this photo so it wasn't just him isolated taking a photo. This adds more color, it adds more depth, it makes the photo feel a little more alive. So just by looking for those natural frames, that's gonna improve your photos tenfold. Okay, next up is perspective. You don't always have to shoot dead on. A lot of people that start photography or are into it, you, you raise the camera up to eye level, you start shooting, you really don't think anything of it, but that's the thing. Try out some different perspectives. Maybe shooting low is gonna expose something in the architecture that you didn't see before, like all of these wood beams when we were shooting Maddie yesterday. If I was just shooting eye level or maybe a little more to the left, I would have missed out on a big portion of those wood beams, but that color complements with what he's wearing and the overall color of the architecture so well that you wanna make that vantage point low. So you're taking advantage of all of that. There's a lot of advantages in here. Advantage, vantage point, taking advantage. <laughs> but you can see how that makes such a big difference opposed to just shooting straight on. Now the same thing goes for shooting down. We walked through that doorway and there was all these tiles on the ground surrounded by stones. You wouldn't typically think anything of it, but symmetry, geometry, all of those things can make your photos incredible. Now we were shooting these like midday so that light was working against us. So I was like, okay, how do we flip this to make it work for us instead of against us? Shadows, we've got lots of light, the shadows will be cool. So let's change the vantage point so that I can take advantage, again, here we go, of all of the geometry and symmetry of those tiles on the floor and the shadow because the sun's at like the highest point. So I climbed up on this ledge, shot down at Maddie. Now we've got a great picture showing him, his shadow, and all of these stones, which create a really, really cool background, if you will, even though it's the floor. But we've used all of these things to make that overall composition more interesting than your standard point and shoot. So framing, perspective. Number three would be utilizing the light. 
Light is around us everywhere. If you just move into the shade, you're gonna get more even light. If you're gonna move into the sun, you're gonna get that harsh light, but then you can use the shadows and different tools and different tricks that you've learned over the years shooting. You can use all these things to your advantage, but sometimes light is cutting through certain areas and it's just creating its own frame and its own perspective that kind of wraps everything up into a really unique composition if you utilize it properly. So as an example of that, when we were shooting in that stairwell, the light was cutting through the rungs, creating this really nice pattern of light on the wall. Instead of just shooting them straight against the wall, I have him step into that light. Now we're going to use those lines to frame one part of his face to get a better, more creative composition of this portrait overall. So the next time you go out to shoot, just try something as simple as moving your subject to somewhere else in the frame than where you would normally put them. Lastly, like here's another example of Maddie in the bottom left corner of the frame. But if we move that up and over a little bit, here's how that photo looks different. Then we can move that all the way over and zoom out and move them to the other side and it looks different again. Now all these photos are good and I like all of them, but you can see just by placing them in different parts of the frame, the photo changes. They're all color graded the same way. But that framing, that composition, really plays a huge part in photography as a whole. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope you get something out of it. I really urge you, I challenge you to go out right now, grab that camera, go outside and shoot something completely different from how you normally shoot it. Start shooting everything from the top down and just see what you get. Maybe shoot everything looking up. Just switch it up and see what you come up with because I guarantee you by keeping that composition in mind, looking for things to frame and utilizing all these tips, you're going to find stuff in your own photos that you can't even believe that you took. So get out there, start shooting. So hit that like button if you like this video, smash it if you so desire. I won't hold it against you. Subscribe if you aren't already and, and, did you think I froze there? I'll see you in the next video.